Morning. Good morning. It's an early one. <laughs> the sun's just rising behind us. And it's the only dry day of the week, so we're making the most of it by making a move today. We left you in Rugeley last week, and that's where we're starting today. We found a nice, quiet little spot just at the side of the River Trent at Brindley Bank. And I'm kind of glad we're leaving this morning because mm. it's got a bit of a grisly history as this place. <laughs> just a little bit. Especially where we are at Brindley Bank. Back in 1839, a lady called Christina Collins got on a boat at Liverpool to go down to London to meet her husband. And when she got to Stoke and Stone, she complained to the canal officials that the boat crew were a bit leery. They were swearing a lot and giving her eyes and just looking a bit threatening. And they said, well, there's no other boats. If you want to get to London, that's the boat you've got to go on. So she got back on it and she was murdered. And they found a body in the canal at Brindley Bank, like right here at Brindley Bank. I don't want to know. No. So when they pulled the body out of the canal, they took it up the steps, the bloody steps they call, because apparently you can still see a blood on the steps. Ooh. Up to the Talbot Inn at the top of the steps. A bit grisly. Anyway, there was an investigation and two of the boatmen were convicted and charged and executed. They were hung for oh. the murder of Christina. But 180 years later, only a couple of years ago, there was an investigation. And it turns out that one of the convictions wasn't right and one of the people that was hung, George Thomas, shouldn't have been hung. <gasps> Grizzly. Yes. Not long after that, this more, there was another to do. William Palmer, aka the Rugeley Poisoner. Oh my he god. He was taking life insurance out on members of his family and then bumping them off, poisoning them with strychnine to pay off his gambling debts. Oh. Yeah, let's get out of here. Quick. Yeah, quick. Uh, if you go up to the church, St. Augustine's Church in Rugeley, you can actually see there's a memorial to Christina Collins. And even now, 180 years later, people still leave flowers on a grave. There were still wow. flowers there. And William Palmer's best mate, who we poisoned, allegedly, his grave is there too, just outside the front doors. Right, shall we get out of here? Yeah, let's go. That's the four arches of the Brindley Bank Aqueduct, the Trent Aqueduct. Uh, the four arches take us over the River Trent and we're going to be following the Trent on our left hand side, our port side, for quite a few miles all the way up towards Stone. It's not the most attractive aqueduct, is it? Not really, no. I like my favourite is the Loon Aqueduct yes. up on the Lancaster. Uh, but it was built by James Brindley, Brindley Bank. Yeah. And he did a lot of stuff on the Trent and Mersey. Remember Brindley Tunnel at Harecastle? So when's your favourite time of year? Mine's the late spring, you know when all the new colours are just starting to blossom. I really love the yellow oilseed rape fields, that's like the start of summer for me, I love it. But I love the snow in the winter as well, although we haven't seen a flake of snow on Silver Fox since we moved on the boat in May 2019. Maybe we'll make up for it this winter, eh? I've got to be honest though, the low late autumn sunshine today is making the views look amazing this morning. Everything's just so green and gold and the sun's bouncing off everything, bringing it to life. I could have taken a million photos just in the last half hour.
Just above us is bridge 71A. It's just after lock 21, which is College Lock. Now that is one of the branches of the West Coast Main Line. It branches off at this point. One goes to Manchester, one goes towards Crewe. And it was on this junction back in 1986, there was a nasty accident. They changed the signalling on the junction and one of the drivers hadn't read the instructions properly. So he was bombing towards the junction, not knowing that a train to Liverpool was bombing towards the same junction in another direction. And crash, the Liverpool train smashed into the other train and there were carriages everywhere. Now the driver of the Liverpool train was killed, but luckily, and it's a miracle, that none of the passengers on either train were killed. When you see the photo, it's just a miracle that none of them were killed. The driver, Eric Good, did die, and there's a memorial to him uh, just at the side of where the accident happened. But it's a bit more grisly than that. Oh God, because about 10 years later, at exactly the same spot, there was an aeroplane crash. Really? Yeah, and an aeroplane, it's only it's a light aircraft, came down and crashed in exactly the same spot where the train crash was. That's not good. Weird, and two people died there. Let's get out of here as well. I know. That big hill over there on our port side is Cannock Chase or The Chase. Oh, you're not get that out of your head now, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought Cannock were in Scotland. Yeah. I think I was thinking of Tunnocks. <laughs> Tunnocks, they make tea cakes, don't they? Tunnocks <laughs> tea cakes. I've got no idea. Yeah, and them caramel biscuits, them really chewy caramel biscuits. I've got no made idea. Made by Turks. I'm sure it is. Or Thurks. I don't know. I'm sure I'll be corrected anyway. Uh, but it's an area of outstanding natural beauty. A bit like you, my little cherub, innit? Eh? <laughs> That was Haywood Lock, named after Nick <laughs> from Haircut 100. Do you remember him? I do. Uh, we're heading towards Great Haywood at Haywood Junction. If we take a left, we'll go down the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal, <laughs> which will ultimately it takes us back down towards, we've been there, haven't we? Towards the bottom of the Wolverhampton flight of locks, which you can go up towards Birmingham, or you could go up the Shroppy, uh, it's the bottom end of the Shropshire Union, yeah. or if you go all the way down, it'll take you down towards Worcester and the River Severn. Not for us, We've had enough of the south for one year. We're carrying on north, but we're going to stop at the services first. You were going to say something then, weren't you? I felt you take an intake of breath, you were like. <laughs> While Sean's filling up with water and emptying the rubbish, I took Otis for a walk down the towpath. He loves it on the boat, he really does. But every time we stop for a lock or to get some water, we take him out for a wee. And Otis. <laughs> this is the first time he's seen so many leaves and you can see he went absolutely mad with excitement. What is it with dogs and leaves? He's just loving it so much. Do you realise that we first got together 28 years ago this week? I know. And you didn't buy me a present? <laughs> Did you buy me one? Not even a car. Did you buy me one? <laughs>
Can you guess how far away we are from the sea here near Great Haywood? Oh, miles. How many miles? That's the question. That far on a map, on a map, we're that far from the sea. Can you smell that salty spray? <laughs> yeah. On our left hand side, <laughs> you're right. On our left hand side is one of two of the only natural salt marshes in Britain. What? It's only a little one, it's like a little bit of pasture land. Uh, but there's like birds and plants that like the salty water growing there. It comes from deep underground. Okay. I wondered where it actually came from because I, I, I didn't know. But it comes from deep underground and they dug a couple of wells to get all the salt water up. I don't know why, you just buy some from shop and mix it with water. <laughs> That's cheaper, isn't it, than building a well. Well, you would, wouldn't you? Bit of Saxo, is it Saxo? Yeah, bit of Saxo in a glass of water and mix it up, instant brine, there you are. I want to go to seaside now. Ooh, yeah. Fancy a tray of chips and some donuts. Back in the 18th and 19th century, when they were building the canals, it was easier for them to follow the lie of the land or go through river valleys, because time was money, just as it is now. So it took longer. I mean, it can take up to two, three years to build an aqueduct. It could take 10 years or more to build a tunnel, like Standage Tunnel, which took 12, 13 years to build. Yeah. So they followed the lie of the land and the river valleys whenever they could. Now, because it wasn't the most direct route, it did take the boaters a bit longer to get to and from where they were going. But the canal companies weren't bothered about that. They just wanted the canals open and boats on there as quick as they could. And when the railways came, they did the same thing. They followed the line of the canals because it was the valleys. Yeah. And in fact, a lot of the companies that owned the railways ended up taking over the canals, using them to help build in the railway and then shutting them down. I know. Go tell them. I'll tell them. was sand and lock and that is well probably our last look for today yeah there is another one a couple of three four miles ahead but we don't know if we're gonna get that far uh, so we're gonna leave you here because you can't come with us because where we go in we've got a bit of a do next time for you next week and we don't want to spoil the surprise now so we're gonna leave you here there's a B&B &B back at that lock <laughs> Uh, so you can get a taxi wherever you're going to go and you can join us next time from Stone. That's where we're going to be. But yes. we can't take you now because it's going to spoil the surprise. Yeah. It is, isn't it? I'm not just like over faffing this. No, you're not. And you usually do over faff it. I usually do over faff. <laughs> uh, if you've enjoyed the vlog, and we hope you have, as always, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. Click the thumbs up button for us. Uh, near that on the subscribe button is the notification bell. If you hit that, YouTube will let you know on your desktop or on your phone whenever we release a new vlog. Even better, support us on Patreon. There's a link if you're watching on a smartphone or a tablet or a computer up above Sean's head. If you're watching on a posh telly, <laughs> go on a computer and find out how to do it uh, or there's a join button on our YouTube homepage or on the video page I keep forgetting to say that don't I? yeah you do Otis is hungry Sean's a bit hungry and I need a wee so we'll see you next week take care of yourself bye Ta next time will we manage to get past the winter stoppage or are we gonna get trapped and face a 100 mile diversion we joined on Silver Fox by a film crew they're filming us filming us and Otis meets the famous George from YouTuber's Minimal List. One, two.
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, getting gawped at by weirdos, nine, ten. Train! <laughs> one of the branches that a branch one of the train drivers hadn't read the instructions properly on how to film in the dark. So he had to do it again after he'd got under the bridge. Blah 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 blah. <sighs> Damn weather. Oh, nuclear brightness. <laughs> Cheap. Getting bits of biscuit out of my teeth. Can you <laughs> smell that salty spray? <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> yeah, oh, Otis can. Bugs going everywhere. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, no, you can't say that. Uh, why? Salty air. Can you smell that salty air? Oh, it's salty spray, in it? <laughs> Do that again, three. You don't think about much else except bacon, do you? Does that make sense? Yeah. It doesn't, does it? I've, I've kind of <laughs> that one up a little bit. You're always standing on something or swallowing something. 